It's good to be back. So, don't need this since I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, I looked at the date today and Brian mentioned that and it's 2-22-2022. And I got a, one of those tidbits from a faculty member that says this date won't happen again until 200 years from now. So count yourself special because you won't be here 200 years from now. <laughs> so today, well, I hope not. <laughs> today is a special day. And what I want to talk about, if my slide will move. It's not moving. Okay, good, super duper. Is maximizing personal and professional excellence through personal branding. And we're going to get into how can we as Rotarians connect even more with the audiences that we want to connect with and how do we as individuals reflect that personal brand or who we are so others may want to be associated with us. So here's our roadmap. Essential elements of personal branding. What exactly is it? And how do we tell the story that we have of ourselves or of the organization that we are a part of? And how do we link the motto of Rotary to brand excellence? In other words, how do we move service above self plus people of action to be equivalent to brand excellence? So that's our roadmap. That's where we're going. I'm going to show you three images. And then I need for you to give me some feedback as to which one would you say is more valuable and why? We have a Mercedes-Benz, red. We have a Bugatti, red. And we have a Honda convertible, red. So, open floor. Which of these three vehicles would you say is the most valuable? And why? We have a short time, so. <laughs> you, you're reminding me of my, my students in the class. You're looking at me like, okay, I'm not the first one to answer. So throw the answers to me quickly, please. Okay, so cost the most, Bugatti, but you haven't answered the question. Which is more valuable? Cost is not necessarily value. Which is more valuable and why? Ah, so you are now making an association with the best car. Why is it the best? Why, why did you think as a child it was the best car? <laughs> ah, very good. They tell you it is. So Bugatti, the cheap one is about $2.5 million. The Mercedes, uh, somewhere about maybe $100,000. And the Honda, about fifty. dollars so cost is one thing, but value is different. Value is based on these different companies and how they project, how they sell the particular product that they have and how we associate importance, how we associate, I need this because it's similar to who I am or who I want to be and I want to be seen with it. In other words, I want to be associated with this particular image. So as we look at personal branding, it goes back to the same thing that companies do in terms of the brand that they have. It's a promise of value because all four cars have four tires. Would you agree? All four cars use some type of fuel. Would you agree? So it's not about the four tires or the fuel or the $2.5 million. They both drive. They're all three cars drive. It's about the promise of value. So as we look at personal branding and we look at ourselves, what is our promise of value? As Rotarians, what is our promise of value? What is it in 2022 when we have been locked away, sequestered, and taken out of our comfort zone? How do we make changes? How do we move beyond where we are today? We're not unique. It's happening across the world. 
The pandemic is not specific to Jonesboro. It's not specific to Arkansas or the U.S. How do we project that brand where others want to be associated with us? So as we look at personal branding, some key things to remember. And I use, again, former math teacher. <laughs> I use a Venn diagram. Your personal brand or your brand is not just what you think of yourself, because I can think that Gary's an awesome person. But that's just one person who thinks that. Or he thinks I'm a really great person. Just he alone. If others think that he's crappy, what, what, what's likely to happen? That's the perception of who he is. So a Mercedes is a Mercedes and people pay more for it because of the perception of, of value. So... Your brand is valuable if there is a greater intersection or overlap of how you see yourself and how others see you. And what you want is to be right there in that middle, that sweet spot, that middle portion. The greater the overlap, the stronger the brand. So as you look at personal branding, look at yourself and look at Rotary, how great is that overlap? with your own personal values and the Rotary. When people see you, do they see a Rotarian or do they see you separated from that role? So as we look at personal branding, some things we need to know before we can figure out what that brand is, what that overlap is, we have to, do, we have to know who we are. You can't sell what you don't know. You have to know who you are to sell who you are. Mercedes can sell their cars easily because they know their brand. Apple can sell the iPhone 13 for how much is it? Someone remind me, how much is the iPhone 13? I don't have one. And if you have one, don't say a word because then you're going to put on shit. Right? We don't want to do that. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. But the idea is that they can sell this and people are buying it. A trillion dollar company because they know their brand. They know the, who they are selling it to and they know how they're getting persons to purchase that because they have created this imagery of what it is to have this type of technology. And therefore, they're able to sell that well. So knowing yourself and being able to sell, your, sell yourself, but also being authentic. What does it mean to be authentic? I hear to be real, to be genuine, to be who you are. Apple knows exactly who it is as a company. So does Mercedes, so does Honda. So does the Bugatti. As individuals, do we know who we are? Are we able to accurately represent ourselves? Or are we different in this forum as we are somewhere else? So we are here at the meeting and we are one person, but at work we are somebody different. Because people look and they see, is there consistency? Because for a brand to be effective, it has to be consistent. And then it has to be appealing. People must want to be associated with you. How many persons want a Bugatti? How many persons want a Mercedes? Oh, wow. How many persons want a Honda? I already drive one, so I, 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 <laughs> I'm already good. But the idea is that it must be appealing. People must want to be associated with your brand or with who you are. And that's why that intersection is there. And it has to be creative. It can't be like everybody else. It can't look the same. It can't be thought. It has to differentiate you from others. And as you look at differentiation, we have to stop and say, okay, who am I? Who are we as an organization? We have to do what we call introspection. Look within ourselves and then do what they do in business, which is a SWOT analysis. What are we good at? What is it that we do well? And that's the internal. And what are some of the things that we are not doing so well, which we can change? Okay, the pandemic has thrown a curveball at every organization, profit and nonprofit. How do we react to that? What do we do differently? <laughs> that too. But the idea is that we have to think through those. And then what are those opportunities that we're not taking advantage of? 
What has changed in how we communicate with each other, how we share information with each other, how we sell what we have? Those are opportunities out there. And then what are the threats? Members are not coming to meetings. People are not willing to donate anymore. People are not willing to volunteer anymore. How do we manage it? How do we mitigate those? And as we look at the SWOT analysis of self and of our organization, we're better able to see how do we now share that value, linking the motto of the Rotary to brand excellence. Service above self plus people of action by getting a greater overlap of the Rotary and ourselves. And that takes us out of our comfort zone. That takes us into places where sometimes we don't want to be because we tend to compartmentalize. I'm a Rotarian, I go to meetings, I do this, and this is me at work, this is me in this particular realm. How do we make sure the overlap is greater? And as we do so, there are some essential elements we need to think about. One, what is it that we're passionate about? Because if you're not passionate about it, you can't do it. You can't sell a Mercedes unless you're passionate about it. You can't sell anything unless you are involved, you see the value. And you've built a reputation, but if you don't share that reputation with anyone, they won't know. We make the assumption oftentimes that people know, they don't. As a, someone who has done a lot of work in communication and how people interact, how people share, and how people, people respond, we often think people understand, but they do not. And we tend not to ask them because we think they should know, they don't. Tell them. Because when you tell them, they'll hear, they can clarify to say, I didn't understand that. That's not, what, that's not how I, I didn't know Rotarians did that. Wow. You're walking in the park, point out the centennial. So you know what, we did that. We took care of that. Oh, downtown where the plaza is, we, we, yeah, we did that. We're impacting our community. That's how you build your brand. And again, looking within. What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are the opportunities that we are missing? And what are the threats we're supposed to be mitigating? And then looking to see who are we connected with? Who are our connections? Are we using those connections effectively and efficiently? How many persons who you work with know that you're a part of the Rotary? How many persons that you play golf with know what you, in terms of your contribution? For example, you talk about going to the food pantry or the coffee. It may look simple, but sharing that value with others is sharing your story. And in sharing your story, you have to be able to say, what are you trying to accomplish? What's your purpose? When you share that story, does it have a purpose? Are you just sharing it because you're wanting to share it to say we're doing this? Or is there a purpose? When you're building a brand, you have to be purposeful. And as you look at sharing what you've accomplished, who is your audience? We're in a world today where technology has taken over every aspect of it. And digital is where many persons go to get their information. The idea of putting it on a poster board is gone, long gone. And knowing which audience you're trying to impact is important as well. Because not every social media reaches the same audience. My kids, 13 and almost 11, or almost 13 and almost 11, they think Facebook is for old people. I said, don't be rude. Daddy, TikTok is where it is. So if we're looking at getting high school students into the Rotary, we have to meet them where they are. So we have to rethink how we are sharing that story. Who is our audience? Or if we have a, a demographic that is not just singular, but there's a, there are multiple pieces, then you need to have a face on Facebook, a face on Instagram, face on Pinterest and a face on TikTok as well. 
Because if it's like at church, I say to them, you know, we're all old people here and the young people are not having a good time because we're making the program just for us. We have to think about those others who want to come into the Rotary and for them to see that there's a place for them. And it's not just these old people, because that's what they see us as, old people who are creating an imagery, a brand that they like. How do we incorporate them into that by creating something that they want to be a part of? And then with any message you're sending, you have to tell the audience, what do you want your audience to do? That's your call to action. So when you share the story and you share it on TikTok, sharing it is not sufficient. Sharing it on Facebook is not sufficient. Having all those images of what we do on Facebook is not sufficient. But saying to your audience, here's why we're sharing it. Here's what we need for you to do. Here's how we want you to move forward. In other words, how do you take action? Because you can share a story. You can put an a, a image up or you can say, here's a Mercedes, here's a Bugatti, here's a Honda. And it stays there in the parking lot, in the covered area. Nobody buys it. It's call to action. How do I get this? How do I get it financed? In the same way, when you put your images out there, tell persons what you expect them to do. Here's an image of us donating. Here's an image of us doing these things. Here's how you can become a member of. Here's why this is valuable. In other words, benefits. Apple sells its iPhone 13 for X, a thousand, whatever it is, and they'll tell you why you need to buy it. Why the one that I have, which is the 11, which I won't stop using until it tells me it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but the idea is that they tell you why you need to get rid of the old one and get the new one. So tell the audience why. What is the impact? What are you expecting? We talk about Rotarians working worldwide and polis pretty much uh, eliminated or gone because of the work that we have done. What is the impact? We're talking earlier about as a child, I would go to school and when it's time for the vaccine, nobody asked me whether I wanted the vaccine or not. <laughs> I just walked up and you're going to the nurse and there's a long line going to the nurse and jab, jab, ah, jab. Ah. That is all you hear. But again, what is the impact? If we don't tell our story in a way where others understand that story, they won't see what we're doing. They won't see what you're doing as an individual. You have to sell that story like they sell the Mercedes, they sell the Bugatti, and they sell the Honda or the Chrysler, or the, or the GMC, doesn't matter. They sell the brand, they sell the story. Others see they want to be associated with it, and therefore, it's important to them. So, take away. Share the rotary story. And then tell persons why you're sharing, and what is the call to action. What are they supposed to do with it, what you've shared? The so what. Maximize social media. Because that's where the world is. Your digital footprint is far greater, far more powerful than your physical footprint. And then thirdly, be purposeful. Have a reason why you're doing it. And be authentic. Being genuine. So persons know you're not doing it because you want to be tapped on the shoulder. You're doing it because of the value that you're creating. And then finally, Jeff Bezos said this quite well. Your brand is what others say about you when you're not in the room. It's not what they say to your face. So after I leave today, oh, seriously. That little Jamaican sounded, <laughs> seriously? I, whether I like it or not, that's who I am. When I leave the classroom, my students, when I go to a conference and I do a presentation, that's how they see me, whether I like it or not. Apple doesn't sell anything if its customers think they have a crappy product. Again, intersection. How I see myself, how others see me, the greater the overlap, the more powerful the brand. So for the Rotary to do well and to continue in these really strange times, we have to figure out 
how do we sell ourselves where others see us how we see ourselves? But we can see ourselves as an awesome organization for a very long time, but it doesn't have a value if others don't see that. How do we figure how to convince them, how to get them to see the value that we are creating? And as an individual, it goes the same way. Now, And there are six questions. So let's see. And this is just, no, that's not right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is like teaching in my classroom. Okay. If you've never played a Kahoot before, it's gonna bring up a website. It's gonna bring up a website with uh, Kahoot.it. Just type it into your phone or whatever device it is and or scan the QR code and put that key in. And the top five persons, I have some gifts to give away. So come on. And these are some questions you should know. Inter you can't sell the rotor unless you know the rotor. Let's see how much you know. Participate as well, so go right ahead. You're not left out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Not a minute, so they don't throw me out because we're, we're out of time. <laughs> Anyone else trying to get in? Okay. That's a Jamaican reggae beat, so I had to put that in there as well. <laughs> Just stay there. Just don't move. Just stay right there if you're in. Anyone else trying to get in? All right, so let's get started. You have 20 seconds to respond to each question. Anyone else? Uh, are we good to go? All righty, let's go. Let's who has the fastest fingers and still know about the rotary. 117 years. They support all of those. <laughs> Just select one. <laughs> wow, Gene. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We need an auditor. <laughs> Who 
said no. Yes, we do. <laughs> Again, you can't sell what you don't know. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> That's a false statement. The Rotary has over 1.2 million members across the world in 35,000 clubs. Again, you can't sell what you don't know. That's on the front page of our website. <laughs> Know your value, sell the value. Oh, wow, Chad. I'm thankful nobody said no. <sighs> that would have been just not good. That is a true statement. Again, we walk in the park, but we don't know the value of what we have. You cannot sell a Mercedes if you don't know the benefits. We have to know our history, know what we have, to sell what we have. <laughs> okay, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's the last one. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> Carl, the test didn't work. An effective personal brand has a great overlap. Let's say it. An effective personal brand has a great overlap with what you think of yourself and what others think of you. The more powerful the brand, the greater the overlap. Who's on the podium? Number three. Jeremy, good job. Number one is. We wanted to give you a little memento for, for being here with us today. And uh, it's rotary coin with a uh, four way test on the back. We hope you'll come back and things settle down for you and you can join us again. I will. Okay, thank you, thank thank you, you so you, much. Mary. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay, next week, um, our, present, our pre, uh, program is Chris Terrell on how to drive effective change in your personal and business life. Rotarians, please join me in the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Okay, thank you, and hope to see you next week. We're adjourned.